It was kind of crazy times at the beginning. I remember very well, vividly, July 1st, about 6.30, quarter till 7 that night. It was the beginning of our holiday weekend on 4th of July, and I got a phone call. And coming to work down 412 heading east, I could see the smoke, and I realized that this was not going to be a normal call out. But through a lot of long hours and a lot of long work and, and really a lot of people pulling together, we seem to have been able to do incredible things in a short period of time with a short amount of people and still come out with our ultimate goal and that's to have everybody be safe and to do what we can to bring Unit 2 back up online as fast as possible. The role in the restoration is, is kind of unique just in the fact that um, I worked in the lab at the time that the fire occurred and uh, on July 1st and then once I um, once the fire happened I actually responded to the fire with the fire department and so I actually was was involved in in that part of it and then in September I uh, came over to the environmental department and uh, joined that team and to help them in the remediation and restoration of Unit 2. I've been responsible for helping to oversee the recovery of our GREC Unit 2 turbine generator and support equipment. It was necessary to first do an assessment as to what happened and then take action to put the unit number one in back in service. And following that we needed to take safety measures to assure that unit number two was safe to work on such as repairing the roof, repairing the crane. Following that we did detailed assessments to determine the extent of the damage and what our options were for restoring it to service. That analysis showed that it was possible to restore the unit in a reasonable amount of time and fortunately for our customers it was an insured loss that uh, will not cost our customers any enormous sum. The bottom line is that uh, we're hoping to have this unit restored to full service Come this coming July after one year and we're hoping that uh, the unit will actually be more efficient and more uh, effective as a result of the repairs that are being made. As far as I'm concerned it started the night of the fire. Uh, I was called out uh, before I got here all power was cut to the plant and I was brought in to help restore unit one power and all the associated things that we could get back up and running. Since then, it has been quite the challenge working with all the contract companies and personnel on uh, running temporary power, repairing burn-up circuits. We've spent a lot of time trying to keep everybody where they could do their job. Uh, lots of disassembly, tear-down, replacement. Uh, we split our crew up. We worked around the clock for several weeks trying to keep things or get things back to where Unit 1 would start and run and produce power. Uh, worked closely with the contractors in their job of cleaning the equipment, getting what had to go out the door. Uh, since then we've just kind of been in a holding pattern as far as maintaining that. It's not been a easy task is once you have one contractor satisfied at one point well another one wants the same power at a different spot so <laughs> it's been quite entertaining and challenging at times of course um, our primary goal was to do it safely so nobody was in danger of any kind of hazard that might come about this process and uh, we're still still trying to move forward with the whole project. I think they're starting to put a few place, pieces back in place. We've replaced a lot of the lighting circuits and got some of our equipment restored and replaced. Uh, lots of wires been pulled and uh, of course since Unit 1 to come back online we have had our plate full keeping it go up and going as normal. And. Uh, at this time, which that's our goal, is to get this place rebuilt and keep Unit 1 producing as long as we can and do it in a safe manner. I uh, have been involved with the restoration since July 1st, since the incident happened. 
um, our, our scope of work in the restoration project is uh, very broad. It ranges from, uh, from power restoration to control wiring, uh, control devices. We've had extensive uh, temporary power that we've had to hook up for contractors. Um, quite, a, uh, quite a laundry list of things that we've been dealing with. Um, Along with that, we've uh, done a lot of research. We've provided a lot of documentation and um, support uh, of the restoration project itself. We have uh, we have uh, worked closely with GE, with Siemens, with several of the major contractors, and uh, we've we've gone hand in hand to try to get this project done in a timely manner. FM Global's risk assessment team has uh, worked with us. Uh, in the past several times and basically looking at all the risks and mitigating those items and addressing those issues. Those people were first contacted. We wanted to get them involved and a uh, thorough investigation was done later on um, on that generator breaker uh, to see which component actually failed. It was discovered that a small solenoid valve necessary for the correct operation of that generator breaker uh, had failed. This is an insurance claim and it's not a uh, it's not a small claim. We're talking like uh, big numbers and uh, having FM Global providing uh, funding for that uh, that repair is the uh, the main the main goal. So obviously we need to work very closely with FM Global and making sure that the uh, all the claims are satisfied and uh, and FM Global is happy with it. At one time we had over a thousand contractors on site. And uh, what makes my job easier is that most of the construction companies at a primary level, meaning the generals, have a, a safety team. They don't just have one safety person. So they manage their own company's safety. So it makes my job easy that I work and coordinate and govern through them. Um, one of my other, my main jobs is to let all the contractors that come on site including outage contractors, uh, service vendors, whatever it happens to be, what our expectations are of safety from them while they're here. We put together an orientation for contractors and everybody that comes on site that's going to be here longer than a 24-hour period has to meet with me and we sit down and we go through it and it takes about 45 minutes. So it gives me a chance to visit with the contractor. Sometimes there's one, sometimes there's 48 of them. So it kind of gives them an idea of the fact that we're state and we're Homeland Security and that we have our GRDA PD here to help us uh, manage the safety of both employees and contractors. It also talks about things as common as uh, no tobacco, 15 mile an hour on the roads, 5 mile an hour in the parking lot, so on and so forth. Um, because we have so much acreage here, but all the activity is piled together, um, you're managing a lot of people, a lot of trucks, a lot of pieces of equipment. You've got vendors coming in and out. Most of your big contractors, they invest in safety with their people. So they come pre-trained. My job working and representing uh, GRDA is not to teach them safety. It's to manage their safety along with our safety programs. GRC's restoration efforts uh, started with the opening of the feed water system for the boiler layup, followed by the uh, draining of the condenser for inspections and repair. The GREC turbine crew started the restoration project and found out shortly into it that the turbine crew alone didn't have the manpower to maintain the reliability and the efficiency of Unit 1. Discussion began in late October of 2016 to form a four-man restoration crew, which would take one journeyman mechanic from four of the five maintenance crews available. The crew consisted of Shane Rogers, turbine crew maintenance personnel, uh, Mark Kemp, boiler crew, Darrell Wilson, coal yard maintenance, Barry Reed, scrubber maintenance. The first assignment for the crew was to remove the two seven-stage condensate pumps from the condenser hot well. 
This required the assistance from the electrical department at the GREC to remove the two 5 ton, 1250 horsepower electric motors. At this point now we uh, are starting to get to the point where some of the stuff is rebuilding. We've got some of the parts that have been sent out are starting to come back. So within the next probably 30 days or so we should be starting to put everything back together. Hopefully by late summer we should be up and running. Being that I'm over the electrical department and the instrumentation and controls department, we have uh, pooled our resource and uh, worked together in several projects. Um, an example is the silo project on Unit 2. It uh, melted all of our um, all of our controls that give the tonnage measurements in the silos for the control room. And we have electrical, INC, and mechanical departments, all three working on the same project. So um, throughout this, we have uh, done what we had to do at times. <laughs> Manpower has been a bit of an issue, um, you know, at times because everybody needs what they need now. So uh, we have to, uh, you know, we have to work together and we have to all come together for the common goal is to get this thing going again. To identify bad cabling, we have repaired you know, lighting that was burned up. We've had extensive damage to our communication system you know, on the Unit 2 side. We've had uh, extensive cabling damage from the turbine deck down to the uh, instrument and control shop and from the turbine deck up through the deaerated room. So um, there's been a lot of research and identification and the cables that have been replaced got some really incredible people that can do so many different things and at times when they're called upon it seems like we just seem to pull together. We have our differences every day, uh, but when it really seems like the important things need to be done, my guys seem to be able to get it done. We've had guys on days, guys on nights, guys on weekends, we've had special projects. Uh, we work with the contractors as far as all their temporary power needs. We work with the contractors on if they have questions about where wire is located or if an MCC is still live or what kind of art flash needs to be done or even just getting on a clearance. Uh, each and every one of my guys in the shop have been able to step up and take care of whatever's been asked of them. We've even had some guys come from the hydro department and hottest part of the summer and do some of the hottest work that was uh, necessary to get it done and I, you know they stayed two weeks and, and really it was good to have them. We have uh, two contractors on our crew right now that have come in and that are contributing you know at the level that they possibly can it just seems like our guys here at, at GRDA just accepted them in and we make sure that we do a safety meeting every morning and we kind of look out for each other and it's, they're just part of the family now. It gets to be a challenge sometimes that turbine deck is the size of a football field. So it's not that big. It houses two full units, one's destroyed, the other one runs the majority of the time. And because of the damage that we sustained uh, to our infrastructure, i.e. electric, so on and so forth, communications, um, our GRDA support people, electrical, operations, uh, mechanical, they've had to keep going. So now you have all these GRDA people working around all these different contractors. Everybody's in a limited amount of space. Um, I'm not going to say that during the summer when it was 120 degrees up there, there, there wasn't some crankiness going on. But all in all, all of our contractors are here to serve and we are here to support our contractors so we can get back making electricity. The effort that's being made is uh, a, very, a tremendous team effort by everyone here at Correct, involving all departments. All uh, uh, personnel have contributed to uh, getting this unit back running again, and it's something that uh, I found very satisfying and uh, great to see the teamwork here at GRDA. It's not a good thing to have a fire destroy part of your plant, but it's a uh, it's, it's been an incredible experience to, to see those challenges and to overcome those challenges and, and for the new opportunities and the new doors that it's opened. I've been in the power industry for a long time, probably 25 years, and I will have to say that 
This is probably the most devastating incident that I've been involved in as far as a fire. But it's also the most, one of the most rewarding incidents that I've been in just to see the amount of work and the amount of uh, things that we've been able to accomplish in a short period of time.